Hey guys, welcome back to another Cinema 4D tutorial. As the title says, we're going to be talking about Arnold Render, but more specifically, we're going to be creating this little LED strip that you see here in the viewport. And what we're going to be doing is creating a loopable rainbow gradient color that we can run through these little uh, LEDs here on this strip. Now, you might be thinking, well, can't you just do that with a material? put it onto a cloner and you're all done. Well, no, it's not that easy. So I'm going to be showing you how to set this up. And this is basically what we're going to be doing here. So I'll just hit play here and you can see this is just looping through the colors. And this is what we're going to be doing. This is all being done with Arnold and a MoGraph cloner object. Okay, so to model this LED strip, it's very easy to do this. You basically just draw out a spline. I just went to a top view and drew out a spline. And then I just used a rectangle spline for the profile shape, put that into a sweep nerb. And that's pretty much all I did for the strip. For the little LED, these little diodes, uh, it's basically just a cube that was placed inside of a cloner object and that cloner object was set to object mode and then it's going to clone along the spline that's in the sweepner. And that's basically all I did. It's very simple to do that. So what we want to do now is determine how we want to emit light off of these diodes and there is two ways of doing that. The first way is with a material, and you're probably not going to want to use a material for this, but I'm going to go ahead and show it to you anyway. So we're going to create an Arnold surface and just a standard surface shader here. And I'm going to turn off the specular, we don't need that, probably don't need base, but that's okay. So we'll go to the emission, we'll turn that up, and let's just make this a cool color blue. I guess that'll be okay. And we'll drop this over here to the cloner object. And we'll turn on the IPR. All right, so you can see it's not very bright. Now remember, this is an LED strip, which means these LEDs need to be bright. So I'm going to take the weight here and we'll go up to two. And that's still not bright enough. So we'll go up to five. Still not bright enough. Let's take it up to something like 25. Okay, that's maybe a little bit better, but you'll notice there's not a lot of bouncing light in there. There is, however, a lot of noise. If I were to take this up even further to 50, it's not really improving any. So I don't really think that this is the option that you want to use to emit light off of this. Now that doesn't mean that you can't use this. In some cases, using the emission here on the material, that will work for certain things. But for something like this LED strip, I don't think this is going to be ideal. So what we'll do is just delete that off of there. And what we want to do now is use the second method, which is an Arnold mesh light tag. Unfortunately, the mesh light tag does not work if you apply it directly to a cloner. And I have tried various methods on trying to get this to work, and it simply will not work. Now, I don't know if this is a bug or just a limitation of Arnold and its connectivity to Cinema 4D. I don't really know. But if we right click on the cloner and go to the Arnold tags and go to Arnold mesh light, you can see that nothing is showing up inside of the IPR window. So in order to get this to work correctly, what we need to do is apply the tag to the object inside of the cloner. And now it's showing up. Now you'll notice that there's also a lot more light in this compared to using the Arnold standard surface, turning the emission on. So we've got some little black area showing up here and that's because we just need to make the light visible. Now there is some noise there, but you'll notice that the noise is not as great as it was when using the material. So more than likely, this is the option here that we want to use for this. Now if all you want is a solid constant color, well, that's pretty much all you got to do right there. That's pretty easy to do. 
you can just go over here and just change the color to whatever you want. And for some reason that did not update. That's probably a bug or something. But that's all you got to do for that. But we're not wanting to create a constant color. We want to create a nice loopable rainbow gradient type color. So we're not going to be able to do that with the option here for the constant. Because if we twirl this open, you can see there's no option there for a gradient. So what we want to do is change this over to Shader Network. Now there's two different ways that we can drive the color for this rainbow gradient that we're going to use. The first way is with a material, which I'll show you that a little later. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the second method, which is a MoGraph shader effector. So we'll select the cloner and we'll go up here to the shader effector. And I'm going to go into the parameter, disable the scale. And we'll go over here to shading. And this is where we're going to create the gradient that's going to be used to drive this uh, rainbow spectrum. So we'll go over here to the shader list and we want to get a gradient. We'll go into that and I want to load a preset. Now if this doesn't show up, you may have to twirl down this little arrow here by the gradient. You may have to open that up to get additional options. Click on load preset. And the first thing your eyes might go to is this one here called heat 2 because it does look like a rainbow. But unfortunately, this is not going to work because we want this to be loopable. That means that we have a hard red over here that would immediately go to this hard blue, and that's not going to give us a nice gradient blend between the red and the blue. So don't choose that one. Instead, what we want here is this one called full colors. Now if you look, you'll see that on the diodes that's on the strip, they've already started turning colors. We've got a really nice gradient rainbow pattern. So now what we need to do is we need to take this display color that's being shown on these clones, and we need to connect that over to Arnold so we can then use that to apply to the tag. So let's go over to this material, and we'll open that up in the network editor. Move that out of the way. I'm going to delete that standard surface because we don't need it right now. And what we want to search for is user data RGB. So here is user data RGB. We'll throw that in. We'll go over here to the attribute because it's currently blank and we're going to type in display underscore color. All right, so now we'll go back over here to the Arnold mesh light tag. We need to drag this material over into here. And that should have updated. It did not. Let's see. Okay, so there is part of the effect. It's not looking right just yet. We need to go back into the shader effector, back over to the parameter tag, and we need to disable this option here called use alpha strength. And now it's working properly. Now if you want, we can go a step further and we can adjust how much of this color is going to show up here. Because right now we have the full spectrum here because we go from blue to into a green to a yellow to an orange to a red to a purple back to a blue. So on each of the ends we have blue and we go through that full color cycle. But maybe you don't want all of those colors showing up on the entire strip. Maybe you only want two colors showing up but you still want it to loop. So if we select the shader, uh, the shader effector, and we'll go into the shading tab, and here for the mapping, the length for the U is what we want. So if we were to take this down, you can see it's actually scaling it down, and now it's giving us more rainbow patterns that are just being tiled over and over again, and maybe that's what you want. But if you want to go the other way, you can just take this value up, so let's go up to something like, I don't know, maybe 500. So now we go from a pinkish red to a purple over to a blue. And maybe you don't want that much. Maybe you want to go a little further. Something like that. And all you have to do to get this to loop is just animate this offset U value. And it's going to look a little weird here in the IPR. So I'll try to go slow with this. But you can see it's changing. Now comes the brighter blue over to the green. 
then the yellows over to the orange to the red back to the purple and the blue and that's basically all you have to do to loop it so what you could do is you could go further with this and rather than just animating and creating a keyframe for this offset u value you can create your own little user data or actually what we could do yeah we could use user data and then we could use a time node for the espresso and then that time node along with maybe a math node maybe multiply and what that will do is that will loop this that way you don't actually have to create keyframes here for this you can just use a slider or whatever type of control you want to use for your user data in order to get these colors to loop and then you can just use the math node in order to speed up the looping or slow it down okay so now let's talk about the other method to drive the color which is with the material so I'm going to take this shader effector and just disable it for the moment uh, because that's the one we're using to drive the color. So we're going to come back and create another one in a minute. So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to use the same uh, material that we're using over here for this mesh light tag. So we'll go into it and what we want to do is disconnect that and we want to search for a ramp and the one that we want is ramp RGB. All right, so we'll connect the output of this user data node here. We'll connect that to main input. And this one should be display underscore color. We'll leave it like that. Now for the ramp, what we want to do is go down here to load preset. And we want the full color again because we're going to be using this ramp to drive the color versus the other way, which was we were using the shader effector to drive the color. All right, so we're going to select the cloner and we're going to create a new shader effector. And this one here, uh, let's see, we want to go over to the parameter and disable scale again, disable use alpha strength. And what we want to do is go into the shading and we want to create a gradient. All right, so we'll go up here and we'll click on gradient. And that's pretty much all we have to do for this. So if we were to take the length here for the U and bring that down, you can see it's doing the same thing as before. It's giving us a lot of these tiled rainbow patterns. Or we could take this up. Uh, that's actually a bit too far because now we have all blue. So let's take this back down to something like 500 or maybe, I don't know, maybe 350. All right, and then just animate this offset U value. And it's doing the same thing as the shader effector. The only difference here is that we're using the ramp RGB node to do this. And maybe you want to use that because maybe you might want to apply other nodes to kind of blend in or composite something on top of this rainbow. Whatever you want to do, that's one way of doing it. Usually what I do is just use the shader effector to drive the color. And then from there, you can use fields or different other effectors to affect that. So if I were to, let's say, just disable this for a moment, turn that off, turn that one back on. And now we'll take this shader effector and let's go over here to fall off and let's create a, a spherical field make it a little bit bigger and let's watch the IPR here as I move this around and you can see what it's doing and of course there are lots of different ways that this can be done you can change it up you can mix and match you can do whatever you want to with all of these different fields to move them around to create different type of lighting effects so I'll just delete that for now so that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, the main issue for me, because I couldn't find out how to do this properly, was the, the issue over here with the user data. You have to type in here for the attribute display underscore color. And that's how you connect the Arnold material here over to the MoGraph side of things so that it will read it and see the color that's being displayed here on the cloner for all these little diodes. 
And again, for something like this, you'll probably want to use the mesh light tag here to get these things to emit light versus using the material. Because if you remember how noisy it was and how we really had to take that emission up high and it still wasn't as bright as what we have here. And this is only the default setting of one. We can actually take this higher and you can see we make it even brighter. We can go really bright with this. And that's a whole lot brighter than what it was using the material. So if you're going to use something like this, it's probably best to use the mesh light tag because there's not as much noise as there would be with the material. Plus you can get it to go a lot brighter. All right, so I think that's going to wrap up this tutorial. I think I covered just about everything. Uh, we talked about how to connect Arnold over to MoGraph and how to get that connected over here. Uh, to the mesh light tag using the uh, standard surface option here for the color. Uh, we talked about the rainbow pattern, how to do that. You can drive that with an Arnold material, or you can do that with a shader effector. So I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this tutorial. But as always, if you guys have any comments, any questions, feel free to comment below. And I'll have more of these Arnold tutorials coming later. Uh, I'm currently still using Arnold. They recently upgraded V-Ray to the beta version, so I've been playing around with that. So who knows, if V-Ray turns out to be nice, I might switch back over to V-Ray and start using that again. But for now, I've been using Arnold. It seems to be working okay. So I'll have more of these tutorials coming soon. So as always, guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.